Good evening, Starville Church. It is Wednesday night. Welcome to our evening service. And I'd just like to share a verse out of Psalm 90. It's one that's appropriate for us, no matter how old we are. Psalm 90 and verse 12 says this, So teach us to number our days, that we may get a heart of wisdom. And that does need to be a prayer for all of us, that we realize there is limited time, that we need to focus on the right things, the important things, the things in our life that add to wisdom, having that relationship with Him. So as we open the service tonight, let's just say, Lord, would you teach us to number our days? You know them. Let us realize it. But let us respond with crying out to you for more wisdom. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful we can be gathered together tonight. Lord, we just ask that you would speak to us tonight in this service, that you would touch us, that we would respond to your presence as we enter in. But Lord, just as that verse says, Lord, we need wisdom. We need wisdom from you. Lord, would you, you just show us. Lord, our lives are short. We want to make every moment count for your glory, for your purpose. Move in us tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening. Join us as we begin to worship this evening with Let Me Glory in the Lord.
Father, we just ask that you would meet with us tonight in this service. Lord, that you would bring your word and that it would change us, change our lives and our communities and our nation for your glory. Amen. Hi, this is the Hebrew alphabet. Aleph, Bet, Gimal, Dalet, Hey, Vav, Zayin, Het, Tet, Yud, Kaf, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samech, Ayin, Peh, Tzadi, Kuf, Resh, Shin, Tav. Good evening. We're continuing our series on Psalm 119. Tonight we're looking at Shamak, the 15th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Every sentence in this portion of Psalm 119 begins with that letter. It's believed that the meaning of this letter is support. The support that comes from God, our shepherd. The thought of his support and the thought of our leaning on the Lord can be seen in Psalm 119, 113 through 120. So as we read Psalm 119, 113 through 120, we can see how the psalmist here and how we uh, can lean on the Lord. Shamak. I hate the double-minded, but I love your law. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Depart from me, you evildoers, that I may keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according to your promise, that I may live, and let me not be put to shame in my hope. Hold me up that I may be safe and have regard for your statutes continually. You spurn all those that go astray from your statutes, for their cunning is in vain. All the wicked of the earth you discard like dross, therefore I love your testimonies. My flesh trembles for fear of you, and I am afraid of your judgments. So we see we, we can lean on the Lord, we can love Him, we can uh, count on him totally to, to take care of us. And because of that, we want him to have our whole heart, our whole life. And we want to look at that thought. The first verse mentions the thought of double-mindedness. We don't want to be double-minded. We don't want to be double-hearted. The thought of a divided heart uh, is not a, a good thought. When, when I was a, a teenager, a young teenager, we, in our neighborhood, the teenagers would get together, the young kids and us, and we would play marbles. And the way we did it is we would just divide up our marbles and not everybody just had their own. And it would be one for you, one for me, one for you, one for me. And uh, we would play marbles in that way. Well, the Lord doesn't function this way with the issues and the affection of our heart. One desire and longing for the Lord, one longing and desire for ah, some of the world. It, it isn't one part of our heart for the Lord and one part of our heart for the world. For the world, the lust of the flesh, and the cares of this world. God's plan is for us to love Him and to be full of His light, not loving Him and also desiring and loving and embracing darkness. The concept of having double-mindedness is that of having a divided heart. And it affects many areas of our life. And we want to allow the Lord to search us and, and try us. He's faithful to show us areas in our life where we do have a divided heart, where we are part for the Lord and, and partly not for the Lord. He wants us to desire and obtain that which satisfies and brings life. He's the one that does satisfy. And we have instruction from scriptures, 1 John 2, 
15 through 17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is of the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whosoever does the will of God abides forever. What a great contrast we see here between that which is lasting and that which will pass away. Between that which is a single heart and that which is a double-minded heart. The scripture we just read in 1 John mentions some things. One thing or a few things it mentions are the desires of the flesh, wrong and evil longings. The desires of the eyes, this can be covetousness. The pride of life, pride in our achievements and possessions. James 1 tells us a, dumble, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So really nothing good comes from having a divided heart, from being double-minded. Even though we disdain, uh, we say, no, we don't want a double heart. Uh, the truth be told, there are areas in our lives that God is weeding out, that God is working in. There's, there's areas that we aren't totally fully hearted. So what do we do? Well, we want to move from where we are to where we should be. It's a, a lifelong journey. One important thought is to see the value of being sold out, to see the value of being holy, single-minded for the Lord. The, the greatest prize is truly the Lord himself. I have two bags here. One says rocks and, and one says gold. So, so here we have them. And if you were allowed to reach your hand into either one, which one would you choose? Well, I'm learning not to answer for other people, but I think you all would say gold. But what if you say, well, I want some of the gold and I'll put my hand in there. And I want some of the rocks and I'm going to put my hands in there. Well, that is a perfect example of being double-minded wanting some of both. But when we consider that really there's great value in the gold and in just a common rock, th there is no value. And it, it encourages us to say, oh, I will be single-minded towards the Lord because it, it's the very best. And the Lord wants all of our heart. He wants us to, to, to give our heart all, all to him. There's such value in God and the things of the kingdom of God that we want to run after that. Scriptures exhorts us to that end. One example is Matthew 13, 44. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Because of the great value of the, the treasure hidden in the field, he, he sells everything. He gets rid of everything. He sets it all aside so he can have the very best. So he was single-minded that I, I'm going to do everything just to get that field. Now, he doesn't do it because, oh, I have to. It says he does it with joy because it's really worth doing. Also in Matthew 13, Jesus repeats this theme with a similar example. Matthew 13, verse 45 through 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. So again, we see that single-mindedness. It's saying that one pearl is worth everything, so I'm going to run after that. And, and everything else can be, be set aside. There was no double-mindedness there. 
And, and we need to have a revelation in, in our heart of just how great the Lord and his ways are. And anything we have to set aside is not a problem at all. There's a song that even speaks of, of, of the pearl of greatest price. I found the pearl of greatest price, my heart to sing for joy. And we want to realize running after the Lord is running after the very best. We, we don't want to run at two directions at the same time. Wisdom instructs us to make decisions upon what is the end of the matter. What is the long-term value? Colossians chapter 3 tells us what has long-term value. In this chapter, there, there's instruction of what we get rid of, what will not abide the fire of judgment, and what will, what, what we should keep. So let's look at part of Colossians, Colossians 3, 1 through 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are in the earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things of the earth. In other words, don't be double-minded. By the grace, by the ability, by the help, by the uh, doing of God, we have been raised with Christ. We have died and our life is hidden with Christ and God. Now, this isn't just wishful thinking. It, it is a fact. Also, this truth that is a fact is something for us to enter into. Uh, we are to set our minds on things above. We can do this because we see the value of having a single heart. This gives us the desire to be totally sold out to the Lord. So moving forward, we all agree we desire a single heart. We don't want to be double-minded. But how is this realized? Well, it certainly is realized as we keep growing. We keep abiding. We keep walking with the Lord. We keep continuing on with the Lord, daily living a life filled with Jesus. This brings us the ability to fully serve the Lord. Every day, small, sometimes bigger decisions to follow God and walk in His ways. This sets us on a path. Uh, Double-mindedness puts us on two paths at the same time. That doesn't work out so well. The end is that we, going no, we go nowhere that amounts to anything. Proverbs has a lot to say about paths. The path of those who desire to be right with the Lord, the path of those who, who don't desire to be right with the Lord, or double-mindedness. Proverbs 4.14, Do not enter the path of the wicked. Do not walk in the way of the evil. And just four verses later, we have a great contrast to the path of the evil of the wicked. But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, which shines brighter and brighter until the full day. We want both feet, all of our heart's desire, all of our longing uh, is to, to be on the path of the Lord. After Thanksgiving, Terry and I will uh, always have a turkey carcass, and we'll normally put it in a, a pot, and we'll boil it down. And then after we boil it down, we, we separate the bones and the gristle and whatever else uh, from the good meat uh, and the broth. We, we even strain it so the good is separated uh, from the bad, and we, we discard the bad. Uh, but the, the good we keep, and we don't mix the, the two together. And in our lives, we want to be those who, who consider, ah, oh, this is good, and this has to go. This is worth keeping, and will add value, and, and this won't. And we'll be doing this all our lives, but we want to make sure we're on top of that, always doing that. And in boiling down tonight's message, 
we don't want to be people of mixture. We want to be single-minded for the, for the Lord. So our closing thought is, Lord, may this be a reality in, in you. May we just keep uh, you ever before us. May you be our greatest desire. How do we do that? We just keep growing in the Lord. We keep developing in the Lord. We keep walking uh, with the Lord. We keep feeding ourselves with God, His Word, the things of the Lord. And we grow stronger and stronger in the Lord. We, we become very uh, apt on the path of the ways of the Lord. Lord, may we walk with you. May a heart be fully yours. Amen. The Lord bless you. Thank you, Wes Talbot, for sharing on what the Bible says about Psalm 119, verses 113 through 120. Section, it's called Shamak. As Wes said, we can lean and trust on the Lord. He is dependable for every one of us. With that in mind, we want him to have our undivided heart. God's plan is for us to have a whole heart completely focused, completely given to Him. In order for that to happen, as Wes said, we must be abiding in Christ. That's a day-by-day thing. Even Jesus prayed, give us our daily bread. And we need that daily bread, that daily relationship with Him. So, as we, go to, as we close tonight and go to the Lord in prayer, let's just say, Lord, we want to have an undivided heart towards You in every way, that we would abide in you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this message. Lord, you do have great things for us, and we can trust in you. But Lord, to fully trust you, we've got to have an undivided heart. So Lord, we want to abide in you day by day, moment by moment. Lord, in every decision that we make. Lord, I ask that you would touch us the rest of this week. Let us respond to your presence as you are near to us. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 